Right, so when you go into fit the kitchen, first thing to do, you'll open up your first unit, and inside it you'll find a bag, and in this bag you'll have the feet. And with the feet, what you do is there's two parts. First part goes in, slip that into the holes, just push it down, push it down, and then these little sections, these are the Howdings kitchen, these little sections that stick up. Bash them down and they fix into the unit and you ain't getting them out. Now, if you've seen them you, and you didn't know that you had to bash these down, you just wouldn't know. You would not know. So that's the first thing you want to do. Uh, then screw the feet in. Don't screw them too far because you're going to be, you need to make sure that you have your feet wound down, wound up enough to fit in your plinth board. My plinths are 170. So if you measure up to that, it can be screwed down a little bit more yet. But if you get them down roughly to where you need them, uh, that's that's just the job so I'll screw all these down to about 170 and then I'll level all through them and then that and then all you do is stick your foot cap on the end and everything uh, and, on, and then then you just flip it over and rest it into place offer it up to that's the top of me worktop so 40 mil worktop that's the top of my base unit so top of base and that's what I'm going to offer everything up to all the way along. Okay, so now I've got this first unit in position. What you want to do is start from your back corner and then level it up. That's perfectly level. Uh, it's on my lines at the back. Start from the back corner, wind the feet down underneath. Oh, God. Wind the feet down underneath so they're all level. So get your back back ones done first, then level it this way forward. Make sure that's nice and level, which it is. And if it's not, then wind your feet down and up at the front to get it level. Just give each foot a quick turn, just make sure they're all nice and steady on the ground. Then you can move to your next one. What you will need though to fix back, see how this is? I've got a noggin behind there. That is because I knew that you have to fix through these holes into the back of here. So, what you do is, that is just so you can get through. You want a long bit to get through there to fix back into your noggin. And then this will fix two. There, like that. And to the nog. Pretty straightforward so what I'll do is before I fix that back I'll get this next 600 unit get that fitted get the feet on there offer that up next to it clamp them together and then screw I'll probably screw these two together and fix it back and uh, <coughs> that's my first two base units literally done so now what I've done is I have got these two together and leveled them through this way to make sure that they're nice and straight, no gaps underneath. Uh, that's level. Runs down here. I've put some fixings in here, making sure not this is where the hinges go. So I'm hinging this door this side. So I've put a fixing in there, fixing the bottom, and I've also fixed it to the wall through yours truly and into my noggin. Um, if you haven't got a noggin behind there, obviously on a normal you'll have to drill that and plug it. But I have, so I haven't got to worry about any of that. And I'm going to do the same all the way across. I'm going to put one on this middle, just one, to fix the two back. And I'll put one on this end as well. Uh, and that'll, that'll fix it all back and it's nice and strong. Fix back to the wall. <laughs> so... There's the larder, same job again. 
you just put the feet on underneath and what I've done is I've leveled through from that side underneath this time because I still want the level I want I want everything to match up so if I shove that underneath from there hang on, from that one to that one level up underneath get the bubble on make sure it's both sides then what you want to do with this is plumb up plumb up the side like with a brick wall and plumb up the face to make sure that it's nice and plumb that way and then find some way of fixing it back now I know I've got a noggin up here for this um, so what I may do is I may create a little channel possibly or something in the back of that so I can fix this back um, and then I'll screw this one to the next larder screw this into this wall as well at the top there's a 35 mil gap and that's going to take this section of I can't remember what you call it but that so there's just enough literally <coughs> just enough room for the top to go in and it'll fit, fit flush <coughs> and if my ceiling's any good it'll all work hopefully and I don't know what you boys are drinking but it's Friday night and I'm having a little flute have some of that now I'm at the point I've screwed both larders together uh, I've got the base unit in this side I've just put a piece of 3 by 2 on the back wall to carry the worktop across and a piece of batten this side I've trimmed it back on the angle so as you don't see it when particularly when you walk in um, it'll be inconspicuous really I've done the same with this side and you don't really notice it that much once it's tiled so it shows a bit I'm going to do exactly the same with this um, <clears throat> and I'll just stain that edge up with worktop oil yeah. but that's where I'm to now uh, the last job for these is the wall units so I'm going to get these wall units lined up make a plumb line up off this section first send that up <clears throat> and then I'm going to start a wall unit here and then I'll do this side after because I just want to make sure that I get the level through off the top of that as well that's that's me aim so I'm gonna put a pencil mark from the top of this unit here straight across that'll be the top of that unit I'll pencil line all the way through plumb up level up and then I'll uh, hang them on the wall so now I'm going to show you how to do the wall units, really simple. Um, that is on there like that now, uh, it's literally two brackets. Um, all you do is, you screw your two brackets onto the wall, which is these. Get one out of the bag now if I can. Mark up just inside your, your bracket start inside of this, so 20 mil in from each side, and then 45 mil down from the top of your unit is, um, or do 40 mil because then you'll have a bit of adjustment. Put that on there like that. If you did see to the see to the crease line here, that's my level line across that I want. So if you did on the crease of the bracket, that would give you sufficient play. So put that there, put one there. As you know, I've got a noggin in behind here, so I haven't got to do any drilling. Then you literally just slot it on. If you want to take the unit up and down to adjust the height, you use the underneath screw. If you want to use it for plumb on the face you use that screw for in and out so I already what I did 
I've got a plumb line up from this unit at the base up to there, which you can see. Pen line that runs all the way down. And when I put my level on now, that is absolutely spot on, perfect, no gaps, all the way up. And then that will receive my end panel. The end panel will just go straight up the side here uh, and it'll be beautiful. I'll be able to clamp it up, screw two, screw two, and it'll be absolutely perfect. Um, the only thing I have got to do, I'll probably take this unit off now and I'll attach my end panel. Or I could just attach the end panel on there. It really doesn't make any difference to me. Um, but I'm going to get the other one sorted, get the brackets on, get that in. This literally took about five 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 ten minutes just for sort out your marking up uh and it's it's really easy really easy to do i'm gonna get my end, other end panel uh, my other wool unit well that worked a treat it's pre-planning the pre-planning is the key if you get all your noggings in beforehand and do all your measurements then it's gonna pay in dividends and i didn't run any cables down I ran all my cables up and in the center of the units so there's no fixing it's going to go anywhere near the cables okay now it's time to do the end panels um with these end panels i've got a section on that goes on top that's 35 mil that section they'll just fit straight between these two all you do is screw in i've just screwed in between oh actually yeah, that's between the uh, door hinges, so that'll never be seen. Screwed it all in, screwed this into that. All you want to do, 20 mil from front to there, because that will be flush with your door then. So you want 20 mil from your carcass to the end panel. Uh, all the way up, clamp it up, clamp it up, and then just send it to them. Send a couple of screws in there. 35 mil screws are the best because they won't pierce the other side and then just do this for everyone uh, make sure I mean I've made sure that I've got a little gap underneath I've used a nail uh, a screw to roll these on just a little packer underneath because uh, when this four comes through it'll just slide nicely underneath then should do if not then I'll cut it down but it leaves me pretty much where I want to be with the ceiling. I mean, I, I haven't had to cut any off these end panels, nothing. Uh, and they're pretty tight up to the ceiling. So, I mean, I've I've measured the ceiling to perfection, more or less. Little tiny gap round, but I'm really happy with that. And then we'll continue, put a big door, uh, end, same as this end panel. We'll go up here. And I've got two more end panels to put one up this side, one up this side, and then there's some shelving that goes in there. Then it's a case of whipping the doors on, whip all the doors on, and then cutting the worktops. So pretty much, we'll probably have, well, we'll have this, we'll have this here. Spent a few hours on, I spent probably an hour on it last night. You, you can do this kind of kitchen in a day, no problem. That is all the end panels on, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Six end panels on, they're all fixed in position. Now it's time for the doors. So doors, unwrap your door on the back. You've got the slats where the hinges go. These need to go inside the cupboard. Arrow, you put these into where it matches up to there. So there's two holes. You just bash them straight in. Probably just need a little hammer, just for give these a tap. They will push, but they're a bit stiff. There you go, that's in. And then that'll just clip into the door, like so. I'll show you now. One-handed again, as always. That goes into the door. And then you just fix two screws which are in the pack. Oh, there's only two in there. That's not good, three in there. Looks like I'm missing a screw already. Great. 
there's three screws in there oh no that's fine no i need another so you fix your little screws in there and then you just clip these on and then you can use the adjustments to go in and out mistake there sorry the arrows need to be facing out to pick up the doors and that's what you get so get the rest of these doors in now that is all the doors on now let's just show you there oh yes so we're at the point now whereas i need the shelves in so i've already done this shelf for you that's in and all that came, comes is where's where have i just put all them right these little things uh, pull one out all they are little shelf hooks stick them in to your desired height there's little holes on the underneath side of your shelves they go in bada boom bada beam bada. one handed as usual give them a push down and you can see slot and lovely um and then carry on hey oh someone sneaks back a witabix in i don't know where well they don't fit in there i don't know where there's there's all sorts going in here anyway it's a bloody two big food larders oh wow uh, right and that's what i'll do all the way across now get all my shelves in there's only one shelf in there to put in what is in here one shelf in there there's uh, two in that one and two in that one beautiful crack on with these shelves and then i'll show you what i do with the door handles okay right i'll show you where we're at all the shelves are in which way is this opening that's it without the handles on you forget don't you shelves in lard it beautiful shelves in all i'm going to do is keep walking down here saying shelves in but didn't take too long to put all that in together so oh and always remember on these meter long ones there's one there's a big thicker butt that goes in behind there now get ready for my worktop to go in so for the worktop these are the little beauties here i just put i just grab all them out the kit and put them ready to go in and they go slot them in here and then you just drive you make sure the flat head the flat side is underside of worktop just jab them in and they just push and then you just send a fixing up into your worktops um there for the backs anyway <laughs> whenever you've got a hole shove them in uh and then I'm going to cut my worktops and I'm going to install one there, one over there. Hey everyone, get this camera sorted. Right, it's time to cut my plinths, which will go underneath the cupboards. Uh, they will be the same size as your units. So I know I've got three sets of units. One's 1600 long, one's 500 long and one's a meter. So I'm going to do three cuts. I've got two lengths of this stuff. Uh, it comes with a plastic bottom on it. This is just this is removable. You can just slide it away like that. What I'm going to do is I'm using a fine toothed um, blade on my circular saw. So hopefully I should be able to cut this straight through and it should just cut the plastic as well. Uh, if it does chip then i'll have to get into the other section of it but just put your square on against this set your circular sword up so as the cut line is running up against your square hold the square and then run your cut along uh, i'm not going to be able to record it because i need two hands you can see just inspect that it doesn't chip the plastic I can get this focus it doesn't chip the plastic it's cut through that nice and clean really um and that's absolutely fine 
cut isn't too bad either really you know if you turn it over you should have the better cut on the back really yeah much cleaner cut on the back see so um this will just go straight in like that now happy days i also need to cut off 10 uh, 15 mil off the height of it because my floor is like this and i've also going to slide my um, laminate floor underneath my plinths when i do my laminate floor so i want to make sure there's plenty enough space and i don't want to have to be cutting them twice so on my circular there's 10 mil and 15 mil i'm just going to run that along roughly uh, i've made sure i've flipped it over <coughs> got me hoover a little end little these little end hoovers just flick straight into the back of these um <coughs> milwaukee sets and i'll tell you what they work a dream so you don't even have to tape it on it's absolutely a dream you just run that across just a little tip for you plenty of people out there already know but with these saw horses uh these little stands if you stick a piece of 3b2 there's a slot here stick a piece of 3b2 in there and that will steady up your <coughs> sources or whatever you want to call them um trestles whatever but uh it works a treat and when you lay a piece of 3b2 on here flat now it's the same height as that so let me show you what's next now you've got your zoom out to touch now you've got your kit board, plinth, whatever you want to call it. You need to attach these two sections to each other. They slide into a slot. This slot is on the back. Once you've slid that into the slot, you'll end up with your unit made up like this. Then you need to find where it needs to go to attach to the legs. The legs underneath will clip onto that so what you do is offer up your kickboard mark your first leg straight up then you need to attach to this section here so mark down from the cupboard what it is that you need <clears throat> i've marked 70 mil then it's literally just a case of putting it in place Right there, find yourself your little screws <coughs> and screw that in position, put your bottom plastic on, flip this up and push it to. And there you go, first one is in place. Now you have to get right down if you wanted to see underneath there. See, now I've got a gap, but that gap is going to allow for my laminate flooring to go in. If I just show you, I can get that and I will be able to push that up. If I just put a screwdriver under there, prise it up, and then my laminate floor will go straight under like I just said. So, continue doing that for the other two. If you just take your time, really easy process. All right, to just show you what we're doing here with the handles, all you do is get a scrap piece of wood, mark that up. Uh, for your centre handle, so all you got to do, you open the handle, Dean, please. Oh, Dean's, oh, there you go. So just offer it up, turn it on the side, that's it, and just make a mark. That's all you need to do, make a mark on, on that. The measure centre of what it is from there to there, mine's 40 mil. Okay. So, yeah. It's recording. So all we do then is, as you can see, I'll get to this bit after, I may as well do the whole thing. So I'll do one down here. Dean's putting the handles on for me as I drill them. Um, all I'm going to do is get this piece of wood every time. Put it on the corner there. I'm spacing it down with a piece of lath. And then it'll give me the identical holes every time. Pre-drilled this piece of wood. That's bang on. All I'll do now is just clamp this to, use your teeth if uh, you've got nothing else. Have you got any teeth? I've got one in my head. <laughs> so use your tooth, 
clamp that on there. I didn't clamp any of these because I was being rough, but really, clamp it on. This drill bit is absolutely knackered. Oh. Why? I've got the piece of wood the wrong way up. It's not centre. I've done it on camera. Don't do what I did. Now I've got a door that's knackered. I'm going to have to get a new door. Make sure you got it the right way, because now, look, my handle's off centre. Oh, That's shit. what not to do, because I was rushing round then. It didn't look. It's all right, I'll buy a new door. Show you again. <laughs> Show you again, I'll cut out the language this time. Make sure that they're on the right side. Because when I was doing these, you have to switch the side, so now it's in the middle. Never mind. I think they're only about 180,000. <laughs> Don't tell my missus. She'll, she'll flip. She'll flip. She won't be going out for dinner today, Doc. I can't afford it. Try again. Can you believe that? Tell, just tell Will, say Will. You can have to sort me out here. Does anyone know what they're doing with kitchens or not? Right. Try again. Try again. Lovely. Right. Okay. Dean's going to show you his bit now. Or oh, one I prepared earlier. Oh, are you not doing it? Am I doing it? Yeah, you can do it. You're there. Alright then. We'll do this one then, because there's already a screw in it. And then, pop your screws through, thank you, sir. Are these long ones? Is that what yeah, they're yeah. taking? There's two sets of screws in there. You've got long ones and short ones. And then, all you do is just match it up. There we go. Ready in? I'm in. Yeah. I would recommend, don't fully screw them. Uh, start them both off so as they go in. There you go. And then once you've got them both, then fully screw them. And you can see how long that takes. Doesn't take long at all, does it? Quite a quick process, really, isn't it? It is if you set yourself up right. We cut these weight tops in five minutes, didn't we? Yeah, five Actually, minutes. five minutes. Circular saw. <laughs> Circular saw. Five minutes, more or less bob on. No messy. Five minutes boot top, five minutes handles, new door required. Do you reckon my lip messes will notice that? Just put the handle on it and see if you fetch them out. Let's put the handle on it to see how bad it is. <laughs> I know how bad it is. Put a bit of uh, put a bit of toothpaste in them holes, make some new ones next to it. It's ridiculous, isn't it? These drill bits are that crap. Oh, they're the small screws. These drill bits are that crap that they punch into the back of the door. There we go. On. <laughs> <laughs> Look how far out that is. Yeah, that's not good, is it? It's pikey, that is. Right, order a new door. Got to go up ovens anyway. Don't get one today, will you? No, I won't get one today, but I've got to take a few things back. It's not pressing, is it? It's only a door. Mm. Where is it? I don't know how much they are, I'll have to check. Right, that's all the handles done. Handles are on. Lovely. Right, my missus can use these now. Uh, no problem. Next job, really, is... Um... <sighs> well, I've got to finish that plinth. And then the cornices. And then these shelves, and then that's the kitchen. That's the kitchen done, basically. But that's more or less finished. And then I've got to do worktop oil. Now this is what they give you. 
um, from Aldens. Ten of that. I think I need five, five coats on it, which will be no either. Five coats on that one. Fix these underneath. Um, I've got a, I've got a bag. Uh, all my spares will go in the bag. There's my bag. Some things in this cupboard here. There we go. Just chuck all the spares in that bag. With the cornice, this is all you do. Just cut your cornice to whatever your size of your what it is. I've already put one on here. As you can see, that goes in. Beautiful. Slot it up, Dean. You put your back rim to the edge of your cupboard, or just so this is flush here. Pull it tight to this side, so as it's nice. Clamp that up like so and then do the same the other side clamp yours up as long as it's just there or there is that not going to go right that one no. go inside the unit yeah you know, just all that shag because of the if I clamp it to the back there, that's where it'll go. Is that nice and just want to point out to me? Oh yes. Looking too hot and heavy on me. That's where it wants to be. And then you literally just I hope that go over the top. It's only just to keep it in place. That's just moved it a touch. Which I will sort out with this. Still have too much that is. No, it's not. Just like that. 30 mil screw. Sure that's a 30, isn't it? We'll soon see. <laughs> we'll soon see. You can pre-drill these, but I don't. I like send it in. Pull it out. Send it in. Job done. Now I'll get another one. Uh, 35, 30 second down. Don't mix your screws up for God's sake, whatever you do. That's my pilot then. If you don't need to keep changing drill bits and all that lot, just send it over. Once in, once out, once in. Shake it all about. That's that. That door is hung now. I can see the door is hung too high. What I will do, because I didn't have this in before, I was trying to match this door up to the top of the cupboards, which really. <coughs> See how I've knocked it up on the hinges to go to the top of the cupboard. All you got to do is just adjust that. Because I'd rather have the nicer gap at the bottom where you can see. And literally, just give that a little tap down until the gap looks nice. And that's the same as the other side. And then just give them a little pinch up. Just a point of reference, when you haven't got a point of reference, I use the top of the cupboard when I hung the doors. But now that's lovely. Look at that. Beautiful. Going really the same. The tops, because I've got no room on the top to fit properly, I'm going to have to um, fix up through the cupboard. I've got no option. But it's not going to look horrendous, I hope. Put a little cap over it anyway, can't you? Put a little what? A little cap in the screw end, so you can't see the screw. If you're that bothered about it. Yeah, you could do that. To be fair, I'm not sweating it. <laughs> I'm not sweating it. Uh, so the reason he's sailing that across both there is because he's having shelves in here. So that's going to be covered as well at the top. Yeah. Exactly. That's how it is on the drawing. 
No. And that's that. So, shall, shall I do the top one or not? I'm just going to line that up. I know where I'm going. I'm going there anyway. I've got nothing to stop that from lifting. Uh, what have I got? I don't think I've got anything. I've got this here. I don't think I can clamp it down, that's all. Well, that little, that little blue clamp will get in there, won't it? I don't know. I don't think so. I've got this, though. That'll hold it down. Right, let go of that, Dean. I'm going to line it up with this because this wool's just a touch off square. So what I'll do is, I'll hold it down with that, like that. Wedge it down. Just till it starts to try and pull through. They, are, they look fine, don't they? Yeah, there's been no issue. As long as, like, cause, because I've got natural oak inside, the gold screw doesn't really show. I mean, I've done it here. Do you know what I mean? Right. So it's no no big deal. I've got silver stuff here that you look up at. So a bit of gold. Everyone likes a little bit of gold, don't they? Know what I mean? No, I have got an issue. Don't know much of one there, is it? No. See, the wall just isn't just just straight because I'm rough. <laughs> so what you have to do is you have to get around it, don't you? It's not much out, is it? Not much out. <laughs> Only about an inch. An inch out of square. But you'll never see it. Because I won't let you. Apart from now. Apart from now, you'll 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 all see it. What to do and what not to do. When that went up then. It crushed my fingers against the ceiling. I won't go say out. Did you won't wince a little bit? You might see it on video, and <laughs> it's nice workable stuff. This is though. You wouldn't even know that's offset. <laughs> God, you're rough, you are. You? <laughs> this is getting crushed my fingers again. Out. There you go, do it till it just starts to try and pull through. How's that? How's that? Job's a garden, ain't it? Yeah, and then I've got one more piece of cornice to do, which we... That's a bit tight, isn't it? She'll go in, hopefully. Yeah, there it'll go then. Open these doers. And it's the same job again. Oh, it's a, literally about a millimetre is too it big. a millimetre? Mm. It's absolutely perfect. All I've got to do is send it to him. Now I've positioned it correctly. Yeah, we don't have to go too far. <laughs> oh God, if we're going to have to go too far. <laughs> You'll never get it back out. Do I have to bother fixing it? <laughs> no screws required. No screws required. Thought up to the ceiling. No, I'm going to fix it. I am going to fix it. But I'm not going to be able to get my fingers in there. That's for sure. Right. Okay, that's all done now. So, this is the, fit, uh, the fitted kitchen, start to finish. More or less. All done. So we've got the work top. In. This just needs oiling, um, but I'm not going to do that until I've uh, finished all the electrics and tiling and stuff like that. So, electric sockets need to go in. But well, this is all fitted, done. 
drawers, everything, all brilliant. Cornices, plinths, and then fridge freezer again in there, obviously. And then this little section here, I've made some shelves out of some uh, covered ends. Beautiful. That's us, all done. Right, the missus can start using that now. But the next job is to... The Sparky can come and get all his sockets and stuff sorted. And uh, I'll cut the spotlights out. Well, I think my next job really is to get this tile. So I'm going to have these tiles on the iron bone. Same as that. On the back wall. Through there. Uh, and then you get me plumbing on. But that's how you fit the kitchen. Start to finish. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, thumbs up. Uh, and subscribe to the channel for more.